Ian Rankin, our guest, he's uh, one of the uh, top crime writers in the world. Does it make you nervous when you invent a character, uh, a new character after a rebus, uh, uh, Inspector Malcolm Fox, that no one will like him or get him? Yeah, yeah, Even of the third book in, no one will really care about him. Well, I mean, the, the only reason that Malcolm Fox is back for a second book is that I liked him enough in book one. And also I felt there was stuff about him I didn't yet know that I would get to know if I wrote more books about him. And I liked the things I can do with Malcolm that I couldn't do with Rebus. Rebus didn't have a family life. He didn't have any friends. Whereas Malcolm is quite gregarious. He, is, mm -hmm. he, he li likes having friends around him. He's very close to his father and his sister, although his relationship with her is quite fractious. So it let me do things, and it let me show Edinburgh in a different light as well, because for Rebus, Edinburgh was always just a series of crime scenes. Mm -hmm. And, and what about romance? Well, I mean, I can see the possibility for it with Malcolm. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. not, he's not immune to the charms of ladies, whereas Rebus was. I used to give Rebus, you know, nice women to try and play with, but he never, he always <laughs> pushed them away. Get it. He always pushed them away. He'd rather sit at home late at night, listen to Leonard Cohen or Van Morris. <laughs> a workaholic. He, is a, or, he was married to the you know, job. a copaholic. Yeah, married, married to the Married to job. the job. Yeah. Who am I without the job? I have no idea. Which is why I was worried about him when he retired. I thought he's, he's just going to drink himself mm -hmm. to death. But luckily, they've changed the retirement age in Scotland for cops. So he's back working again. Because of the boomers and the... I'm not sure. I think, I think retirement age is what for it, cops? Well, I mean, it was 55 for uniform and 60 for detective. And now they've put it up to 65. I think partly because we can't afford the, um, the pensions. Uh, partly also because they were losing a lot of very good um, people with lots of experience when they still had a lot to give. Right. And, and we'll continue to do that, even they could be a little plumper. Well, Rebus Sometimes. is going to be a little bit slower. You know, he's turning into Frank Cannon. You really? Know, he's, he's slowing <laughs> down fast. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's working in cold cases. He's working at police headquarters. I know what he's doing. He just right. isn't appearing in the books as yet. When you go to bed at night and rest your weary head, do, do the characters keep you awake, whether you're beginning a book, ending a book? Uh, do you constantly have uh, the real running? No, only when I'm writing a book. Mm. Yeah, if I'm writing a book, uh, it's, I, I do get these horrible panic attacks. Um, I think because the adrenaline never lets up, you know, because you know that next morning at nine o'clock you're going to be sitting back down in the middle of that exciting scene and you don't want to forget what you've got to do. Sure. So you don't never switch off. So I jump out of bed at three in the morning with my heart racing, thinking I'm having a heart attack. Can you write anywhere? No. Or could you I've write in Los Angeles or no. Vancouver? No, no, I've tried it. I'm very jealous. I've got a neighbor who lives in the same street as me, Alexander McCall Smith, number one oh, ladies detective he's agency. He's been here, yeah. yes. And he can he write anywhere. He has a sailboat here. He can, I know he does. He's got a sister here, or two yeah. sisters here. Yes, yeah, a um, family. He, um, he <coughs> writes, you know, airport lounges, hotel mm -hmm. rooms, trains, planes, automobiles. I can't. I've got to be in my room at home with music playing and a supply of chocolate bars and lots of coffee, and then I'm fine. And a time of day or night? Um, if, I'm, if I'm writing a book, it's seven days a week, but I, if it's not working in the morning, I'll take time off and come back in the mm. afternoon. Um, sometimes the evening, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night until one, two in the morning. That's a good time to write. And Miranda says? M Miranda says, get Miranda, up. Miranda, your lovely wife. She gets up at seven, she says, get up at 7.30, <laughs> you know, even if I've been awake until two in the morning. Mm. Actually, not so much now. We've got one son left at home and one just started <laughs> at university. So we don't have the school run so much anymore. Exactly. Uh, you dedicated this book to uh, David Thompson in memoriam. Mm. Who was he? Uh, uh, David Thompson was a very, very fine bookseller with a crime a uh, bookstore, a mystery bookstore in Houston, Texas. Oh. And he died extraordinarily young uh, a couple of years back. And he was a huge help to lots of young up and coming crime writers. Mm. He was a great champion of unknown writers who weren't otherwise going to get a chance. He was passionate about the genre. He was passionate about book selling and reading uh, and just a devastating loss to the community. What happened to that punk band? The punk of band yours? I was in? Well, in real life, we lasted six months, the Dancing Pigs, and we played about six gigs. Um, <laughs> That's in fiction, not a lot. No, well, we, were we weren't very good. But in fiction, we became a worldwide phenomenon, and in the Rebus novel Black and Blue, we play a huge Greenpeace gig in, in Aberdeen. So we were a huge success, but mm -hmm. only in fiction. Would you go back ever, uh, it, just having some fun on a, a big birthday or something, gather the, uh, 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 is the band still yeah, all, all yeah, alive? Yeah, I saw the keyboard player not long ago. Mm -hmm. um, he had a birthday, because he was at school with me and he had a birthday party. Um, the guitarist got in touch a little while ago to say he's got some tapes of us playing some live gigs. I said, how much do you want for them? Because I don't want those getting out into the public domain. You know, I want them, <laughs> I want them captured mm -hmm. and destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we could get back together again, but mm -hmm. would we be any better than we were in 1979? 
Well, there's certainly lots to punk about, as you know, because it's, so, it's. it's political and there's so much happening in the world. Uh, Gaddafi True. apparently is a goner yeah. as of yeah. this or, morning well, or yesterday. Uh, We're never sure. Speaking as a conspiracy theorist, you just never know with these photographs, right? Mm -hmm. They show you photographs. Yeah, there's some good makeup artists yeah. around. None dare call it conspiracy. Yep. We do not know. I do like a good conspiracy. You sure do. Where were you on 9-11? Oh, where was I? I was at home. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, I was taking the, uh, my oldest son up to primary school and the crossing patrol guy um, said, have you heard what's happened? And I mm -hmm. ran back home and saw it, yeah. Etched in our minds. Yeah. So at the Vancouver International Writers Festival, you'll be in conversation. Apparently, you're sold out. Yes. At uh, 8 o'clock on October 20th, Crime Time Group, 10 a.m. on October 21st. And apparently, you're sold out again on Bloody Scotland, which is at 10.30 a.m. How oh, nice to meet you. Thanks. Thank you. It's great. Thanks a lot. Uh, Ian Rankin, former swine herder and a tax collector. Didn't you collect taxes I once? Yeah, you know, but that, I liked that job. I, I had no money, and I was taking money from people who did have money. So that was a <laughs> good job. You see, that's good. I'm an anarchist. <laughs> of course you are.